Hi there, I want to go through a few examples with you calculating the liquid dose and to start off we need to consider the formula we're going to use for our calculations. Now a formula you may have come across will have gone something like this what you want over what you've got times what it's in. In other words we'll turn the question into a fraction times a number. Now what you want means what you want to give the patient and what you've got means what have you got in stock and what it's in is simply the volume. So I could have rewritten this formula as patient over stock times volume. However, one thing to always be careful of, but we must make sure that we have the same units of weight for both the patient and the stock value. So let's dive in. Okay, I've got six questions that I'm going to go through starting with quite easy ones and building up. First question. A doctor prescribes 50 milligrams of frusamide. The stock volume is 10 milligrams in one milliliter. Calculate the volume in milliliters to be administered. Now remember the formula, what you want over what you've got times what it's in. But I like to think of it as what you want to give the patient over what you've got in stock times what it's in. So let's unpack the question using the formula. I want to give the patient 50 milligrams and in stock I have 10 milligrams and the stock volume is 1 milliliter. And I always want to check that the units are the same in the fraction, indeed they are, they're both milligrams. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify, well 50 and 10 I can divide both by 10. And I've got 5 over 1 times 1. Well, that's just equal to 5 over 1, otherwise known as 5. So my final answer is 5 milliliters. Not that it's really needed on this occasion, but I will check it with the calculator. So turn it on and clear the memory. I have 50 divided by 10 times 1 and the answer is indeed exactly 5 milliliters. Okay on to the next question. Second question. A doctor prescribes a patient 40 milligrams of pain relief. The medication ampule contains 50 milligrams in 2 milliliters and again how many milliliters of medication should be drawn up. Once again we think about our formula, what I want to give the patient over what I've got in stock times the volume that it's in. So I will unpack the question using the formula. I want to give the patient 40 milligrams. In stock I have got 50 milligrams and the stock volume it is in 2 milliliters. Again checking the units I'm happy that they're both the same again they're both milligrams so again I can proceed, I always start by simplifying the fractions if possible and again I can divide both top and bottom by 10. I can cancel out those zeros. So I end up with 4 over 5 times 2. I have to be careful when I'm multiplying a fraction by a whole number. I can only times the top number by the 2 so what I tend to do is just draw a little line across to remind myself that I mustn't multiply the bottom number by 2 as well. So 4 over 5 times 2 becomes 8 over 5. I haven't quite finished. And that last step, 8 divided by 5, well that is the same as saying 5 into 8. Well 5 goes into 8 one time, remainder 3, and as that remainder is by itself I must go decimal and add a 0 on the bottom, so it becomes 5 into 30 goes 6. So our final answer is 1.6 millilitres. Again, let's check that with the calculator. Clear the memory. Because I have the calculator, there's no need to do any intermediate steps. I simply put the formula directly into the calculator as long as the units in the fraction were the same and they were. So I have 40 divided by 50 times by 2. And that confirms that my answer was indeed 1.6 millilitres. 
onwards and upwards. Question 3. The doctor has prescribed 32 units of atropid. There are 100 units in 1 milliliter. Calculate the volume in milliliter of atropid to be drawn up. Let's not worry too much about these curious units that they've given us rather than weight units. We'll just proceed and see how we get on. Formula. I want to give the patient 32 units. The stock is 100 units and it's in 1 mil. The volume is 1 milliliter. Now my bad handwriting aside, it actually doesn't matter that we didn't know what these curious units called units were because in the fraction they are the same. So we can proceed directly to simplifying that fraction. We can proceed directly to working out there's no need for conversion. Let me write it out over here a little bit neatly. 32 over 100 times 1. Now both top and bottom of that fraction are even so I can halve them. It becomes 16 over 50 and I can halve it one more time. It becomes 8 over 25. So I have 8 over 25 times 1. Again taking care just to only multiply the top number by the 1. Well 8 times 1 is still 8 so I end up with 8 over 25. This looks tricky but that means 8 divided by 25. In other words 25 into 8. There's a common mistake people make here where they always think with the division that the smaller number goes on the outside and that simply isn't true. It's often the case but the important thing is that it is the bottom number that always goes on the outside. So in this case it was 25 going into 8. Well we can do this, there's no need to panic, 25 into 8 doesn't go. So I put a naught and that 8 has simply not been used so I'm carrying the 8. But now I can say that I have an 8 remainder by itself. So I go decimal, put a naught on the bottom, make that a little longer. 25 into 8 here, well that goes 3 times because 325 takes me to 75. So that's remainder 5. I still have another remainder so I simply add another naught. Of course it wouldn't make sense to add another decimal but adding a naught allows it to continue. And then 25 into 50 is 2. So our final answer is 0.32 millilitres. Let's check that with the calculator. Clear the memory. Now the units in the fraction were the same so I can directly put the formula into the calculator. We have 32 divided by 100 times by 1. And the answer is there, 0.32 millilitres. Excellent, we're halfway through. On to the next question. The doctor has prescribed eight international units, IU, of a drug. There are 50 international units in four mils. Calculate the volume to be administered. Well, good old formula, patient over stock times volume. I'm not going to worry about those units because I saw last time I was able to take care of it. So I want to give the patient 8 IU. In stock I have 50 I you and it's in four millilitres. Once again we can see that we have the same units top and bottom so once again we can proceed directly to the simplifying stage. I'll write it out again over here 8 over 50 times 4. We can see that fraction does simplify I can half top and bottom divide by 2 so that become 4 over 25 times 4, that 4 hasn't changed of course. Give myself a reminder, I must only times the top numbers. Now 4 times 4 is 16, so I have 16 over 25. I can't simplify that anymore, so, so we have 25 into 16. Remember the bottom number goes on the outside. Now 25 into 1 doesn't go, and 25 into 16 doesn't go, so I have to put a naught on the end and that 16 hasn't been used so it's a remainder. It sounds a bit tricky but just hold your nerve. We have the remainder of 16 by itself so we put the zero. Now 25 into 160 goes six times. 
25 times 6 is 150 and that gives us a remainder of 10. So one more zero on the end and we can now say 25 into 100 is 4. So our final answer is 0 0.64 millilitres. Check that with the calculator, clear the memory, go back to the original formula because the units were the same, 8 divide 50 times 4 equals 0 0.64 as expected. Two to go. Question 5. A doctor requests 250 milligrams of medication to be prepared for injection. The ampules available contain 0 0.4 grams in 4 milliliters. What volume should be administered? So let's start as usual with our formula and unpack the question. I want to give the patient 250 milligrams. In stock, I have got 0 0.4 grams and it's in four millilitres and now finally we see an occasion where the units in the fraction are not the same I have milligrams on top and grams on the bottom so I'm going to have to convert one of those in order to make them the same I always tend to go to the awkward one the 0 0.4 grams so if I can convert 0 0.4 grams to milligrams hopefully that will make life a little easier now grams to milligrams is multiplied by a thousand and by hand a simple way of doing that is to simply move the decimal point three places to the right one two three you can see there that in the moving of that I've made space for two zeros and I hope you can see that that means that 0 0.4 grams is the same as 400 milligrams in other words our formula has been rewritten as 250 milligrams over 400 milligrams times 4 milliliters and it is now in the form that we want because now our units are the same and we can proceed to simplify both 250 and 400 end in zeros let's divide by 10 let's cancel out one of those zeros in addition, 5 goes into 25 and 40. 5 goes into 25 5 times and 5 goes into 40 8 times. So the fraction has simplified right down to 5 over 8. So I'm left with 5 over 8 times 4. Taking care only to times the top numbers, I have 5 times 4 is 20 on the top and 8 on the bottom. That does simplify. I can half top and bottom to give 10 over 4 and half again to give 5 over 2. You can probably see what the answer is going to be already, but bottom number on the outside, 2 into 5, well that goes 2 times with 1 left over, a remainder 1, and because that remainder is by itself, I go decimal, top and bottom, and add a 0 on the bottom, and that is then 2 into 10 is 5. Our final answer is 2.5 millilitres. Let's check that with the calculator, clear the memory. Now we can't go back to our original formula, we have to go back to the modified formula, the 250 over 400 times 4. So 250 divided by 400 times 4 does indeed equal to 2.5. So there we saw an example, the first example we have seen, where the units in the fraction were not the same. No need to panic, we simply convert one of them to make them the same and then proceed as normal. On to the final question. A doctor requests 150 milligrams of medication to be prepared for injection. The ampules available contain 0 0.6 grams in 6 milliliters. What volume should be administered? Again, our formula is what you want over what you've got times what it's in patient overstock times volume and already we can see that this is one of my trickier questions but let's proceed carefully I want to give the patient 150 milligrams in stock I have got 0 0.6 grams and it is in 6 milliliters as I'd earlier said my units are indeed different so I must convert and sticking with my earlier rationale I'm going to convert 0 0.6 grams into milligrams so I'm going to move that decimal three places to the right one two 
three, and that is the same as times in by a thousand. Again, I can see room for two zeros. So I can now rewrite my formula, my unpacked formula as 150 milligrams over 600 milligrams times six milliliters. And as my units are indeed the same now, top and bottom, I can proceed to simplify. Again, they both end in zeros. So let's cancel one of the zeros, dividing by 10. Five goes into both 15 and 60. Five goes into 15 three times and into 60 12 times. Don't forget the time six. The fraction simplifies a little bit more. Three goes into top and bottom. Three into three is one. Three into 12 is four. So I end up with a quarter, one over four times six. Remind myself to only multiply the top value. So I end up with six over four, which does simplify. I can half top and bottom to give three over two. So final calculation is two into three. Well, two into three goes one with one left over. Go decimal and add a zero. Two into 10 is five. And therefore my final answer is 1.5 millilitres. Check with the calculator for the last time. Clear the memory. And again, I go to the adjusted formula, the formula once I'd taken care of the units. So I have 150 divided by 600 times by six. And sure enough, my answer comes out to be 1.5 millilitres. Looking at that last slide, it does look rather complicated, but it all starts with the formula. And so long as you keep an eye on the units, and convert one of those if required, then it is a series of very straightforward steps. Doing it by hand always takes a little longer and does require you to have good skills of simplifying as well as dividing where decimals may come in. With the calculator it's always a lot quicker but do make sure that you don't get the calculator out too early. You use the calculator on the formula once the units in the fraction are the same. And I'll just leave you there with the reminder of the formula with the caveat that you must always check that the units are the same in the fraction part. Thanks for listening.